Sumika is the type that interferes after all. Kanoko walks out of McDonald's, and Sumika runs right after her. She again tells her to give up on Haim, or bad things will happen. Kanoko ignores her and keeps walking until Sumika stops chasing her. Suddenly, she's worried about Haim and tries to call her, but Haim doesn't pick up. She goes over her gallery to see her collection of Haim's pictures, and that makes her feel better. A flashback unfolds of how they first met. Back then, Kanoko is a loner without friends. Haim is discussing with her classmates about the celebration video they plan to make since the end of the school year is getting close. They are all good friends, enjoying life, and Kanoko hates them all. They take up space because they are a big group. Kanoko has a place of her own, away from prying eyes. One day, Haim walks up to Kanoko, alone, sitting on the stairs where she always eats. In the classroom, Kanoko is worried that a good kid like Haim will tell on her. Haim explains to Kanoko that she and other classmates are congratulating their teacher on her wedding as part of the celebration video. They are all going to do something or say their congrats and then put it all together into one video. Haim encourages her to join them. It's a class-wide event. Kanoko doesn't feel like she can say no when Haim claims it's a class-wide event. Kanoko thinks in her bed that the supposed good kids can do the celebration on their own and that Haim shouldn't stalk her up the stairs just to bother her with something dumb. The next day, Haim praises Kanoko, saying she found a good spot for a relaxing lunch. Haim asks her to go outside because it seems nice. Kanoko wonders if Haim is doing this because she's a good kid or does she pity how lonely she is. From then on, Haim comes to visit her every day. At first, Kanoko feels she doesn't need that stuff. In the classroom, two students come up to her to ask her to make a signboard for the video. There's a shot at the end of the video with the whole class, and they need it for that. Something like, congratulations on your wedding. Kanoko shyly asks if it has to be her, but they explain she's the only one who's not doing anything. Feeling pressured, Kanoko agrees. She's not good at this at all, but she will still try. On her way to lunch, Haim stops her to tell her she should say it if she doesn't want to do it, otherwise, they won't know. If she doesn't speak out, it's like it never happened. Kanoko simply states there is no problem and walks away. In the class, a classmate of Kanoko's thinks she's done a good work with the signboard, so they can now go ahead and put it on the frame. Kanoko thinks it's not finished yet, but the girl tells her not to worry about the details. Besides, they're going to use that sign tomorrow. They got permission to film the group shot on the roof. After class, Haim takes the signboard to her usual lunch place and starts destroying it. Haim sees what Kanoko has done but just walks away from it. The classmates show Kanoko what someone has done with her signboard. It was found by the stairs to the roof. They think it has to be someone who knew about the video shoot. Kanoko is surprised Haim didn't tell anyone who did it. She then remembers what Haim told her. If you don't speak out, it's like it never happened. She confesses she's the one who broke the signboard. She never wanted to make this. They don't get why she's saying that now when she's the one who made the signboard. Haim steps in to defend Kanoko, saying Kanoko couldn't have done this yesterday because she was with her. According to Haim, yesterday after school, Kanoko showed her the finished sign and went straight home. Kanoko doesn't understand why Haim is doing this for her. Haim whispers to Kanoko to stay quiet, she'll explain later. She tells the classmates Kanoko is trying to settle this by taking the fall for it, and they should stop trying to find out who did it. There's nothing they can do even if they find out who did it. They will try to remake the thing during lunch break. Haim is sure they can finish it in time if they work together. Kanoko wonders if Haim is always lying. Together, they go to the rooftop to talk. Haim borrowed the key for the video. Everyone in class trusts her, and so they believed what she said this morning too. Not what Kanoko said, but what Haim said. Haim thinks Kanoko sucks at using a facade. Kanoko asks if by facade she means this good kid act. She angrily admits she hates these types of people. They are so insensitive and arrogant, always so righteous and good, and they always take the spaces where she can be. Haim tells her her facade might not be as bad after all, as she kept these things all to herself. Kanoko starts to realize Haim might be different from the rest. Haim thinks everyone's so terrible to Kanoko, but she's always just taking it, being the good kid, so she was worried. Haim was annoyed by how Kanoko didn't push back. Kanoko says she did, and it didn't work, but Haim knows that's just a terrible excuse. Kanoko tells her she's different than usual. Haim's facade is the most perfect and cutest. She's going to use this cuteness to become loved by everyone. She's not going to grit her teeth to put up with everyone. Everyone is going to want her. That's what she's working so hard for. 
she's not going to settle for being the good kid. Kanoko is surprised how different she is from all the others, considering she's a part of the group. She says tearfully she'll stop being the silent, good kid. Someone told on her once, it was terrible. She wasn't going to tell anyone because of that. Kanoko is the only one who knows about it. Kanoko found out about it because Haim helped her, but Haim couldn't stop herself. She did it because Kanoko reminded her of a person who outed her, Mitsuki. Kanoko wonders if she was similar to her, but in Mitsuki's case, she couldn't stop being honest, but she also had no facade-making skills, and she couldn't leave her alone. Still, she ended up hating Haim in the end. Kanoko promises she won't hate her. Haim thinks that would be nice, now that she finally has a friend. Haim wants to take a break from her facade when it's just her and Kanoko. As Haim lays her head on Kanoko's shoulder, she blushes. She notices Haim has such pretty eyelashes, impeccable skin, hair that smells nice, and such a petite face. Is this what being drawn in is like? Being cute is awesome. That's how their friendship began for them. From that day on, she's been Haim's one and only friend, the only special person. At that moment, Haim calls her back and apologizes for not picking up earlier. She was in the bath. Kanoko says she just wanted to hear her voice, that's all. Haim thinks she seems kinda tired. Kanoko should vent if she needs to, as she's the type to let these things pile up. She wishes Haim good night and hangs up. At that moment, Mitsuki sees her and asks what she's doing here. She just says she's going home, but before leaving, Kanoko tells her they are nothing alike, leaving Mitsuki confused. On the bus, she thinks of how in the school, she had to make another signboard after destroying the first one. Haim stood up for her so she couldn't let her down. No one ever figured out who broke the first one thanks to Haim. On the roof, they eat together, and Haim praises Kanoko for pulling off the facade, but she just did as Haim thought her. If Kanoko can keep this up, maybe she won't need Haim anymore. But Kanoko explains the only reason she was able to do it is that she saw Haim's face. She wants to be able to help her too if she can. Haim asks for her phone, and with it, they take pictures. Haim tells her to stare at this picture if she needs an energizing boost. Her cuteness is a facade, but her real self is even cuter. The only person who knows that is Kanoko, her special someone. A few days later, Kanoko goes to work alone. She reflects on how successfully she kept hidden what happened in McDonald's between her and Sumika. She sees Sumika on the stairs, waiting for her, but she ignores her and walks past her. Sumika asks Kanoko if she won't listen to her wish, considering she wanted her to become Bloom. Kanoko says it's fine. She'll find another way to get Haim back, so Sumika should stay out of her way. Sumika threatens her, saying she will make it so that Schwestern can't be cancelled if she becomes Bloom, making those two sisters forever. Kanoko gets frustrated, but Sumika explains she's doing this to protect the salon. She has seen what happens when romance is brought here. She pulls out two crews and explains how years ago, they had two other students, but romance destroyed their relationship. One was a second year called Sayanji. She, Mai, and Sumika were the original cast. Another third year joined afterward, called Goedo. She became popular among the guests immediately. It was impossible to read whatever Goedo was thinking, and she was quick to grasp other people's weaknesses. She was hard to like but had charm. Goedo was approaching Sayanji san romantically, and Sumika could tell Sayanji san was attracted to her. The guests were wondering what those two were whispering so secretly as they were leaving the salon. At the time, Sumika didn't care about their romance, but they shouldn't avoid guests. Goedo says Sumika stopped paying attention to her, but since she's always learning from the second year, there's nothing for her to do. Goedo teases Sumika that she was just worried because Sayanji is always spending time with her, and that might displease her. Sumika isn't upset over a small thing like that, as Goedo is still new and needs Sayanji to learn how to do the work. Sumika explains she always got along fine with both Goedo and Sayanji, but not in a romantic way. She stood no chance against Goedo, who approached women with romantic intent. Goedo whispers to Sumika not to be worried, as she's doing this only to please the customers. There's nothing to be worried about. There was nothing Sumika could do. Goedo was just stacking up small things like that until it was impossible to turn back. By that time, Goedo and Sayanji were already lovers. She warned Sayanji Goedo seems like bad news, but Sayanji thought Sumika doesn't understand because she's never been in love. Mai, seemingly unaware of the complications, kept praising everyone for the good work they're doing. Sayanji asked her if it would be possible for her to work more on the weekends so she can work at the same time as Goedo. Sumika wondered if love is really all that important. Does it take precedence over everything else? 
Sumika saw the two leave the salon together and got suspicious. Mai told her to not just look around but to do some work. Sumika goes after them and follows them into another room. She should have stopped them much earlier. In there, she's shocked to see them passionately kissing. Goedo says it's not nice to interfere with other people's romance. Sumika's furious to see Goedo wear crews as it's only meant for sisters. Sayanji apologizes in her place and asks if she could be Shwestern with Goedo. And so, the Shwestern relationship between Sumika and Sayanji was cancelled. Goedo became her elder sister instead. Still, Sumika tried to believe Goedo would be a better elder sister than her. The sisters who were also lovers were extremely close, of course. It's like they were lost in their own world. She thought, so this is what romance is like. She tried to convince herself that things were fine. But it wasn't. Goedo quit the salon because of her real job or something. She threw away Sayanji and the Shwestern so easily. Sayanji was the only one who was serious about it. After being abandoned like that, Sayanji couldn't keep working at the salon. So their romance destroyed their relationship. However, Kanoko doesn't care about this long flashback. She doesn't know those people. Sumika explains their job is to be friendly to each other as students of Lieb Girls Academy. To do that, the best way is for them to actually be close to each other. But romance is out of the question. That's what destroys them. Just like Kanoko is trying to destroy them now. Kanoko screams she'll never give up on Haim. She wants Sumika to leave them alone. She doesn't care about the bloom, but Sumika goes on that as long as she's in love with Haim, she'll want to break up the current relationships at some point, and they won't be able to continue as they are. Kanoko thinks things are great right now. Haim won't fall in love with anyone, and she will always be her friend. That's all she wants. Love confessions or things like that won't ever happen. Kanoko just wants to stay by her side. Sumika doesn't know what any of that even means. Kanoko tells her if she wants to ban romance, she's not the one she should say that to, implying Mitsuki might be in love with Haim. Sumika asks her if she'll stop with the romance, but Kanoko thinks there's nothing to stop. She won't do anything. Inside, Mai shows everyone the ballot for the cast members. There, each of them will write the name of the person who they believe should be Bloom Sama and cast the vote before the end of the election tomorrow. When the winner is revealed, they will also show who voted for whom. Each ballot counts for 90 votes, so they should take some time to think before they vote. While dressing for the salon, Kanoko thinks about how Sumika turned out to be someone who interferes, so she doesn't care about her anymore. She only wants to win back her place next to Haim. With Haim dropping out and Sumika not being reliable, Mitsuki is getting closer to becoming Bloom. Kanoko wonders why this Bloom election even exists. There's no need to change anything. Haim proudly tells the guests she's voting for Mitsuki and that everyone else should support her too. If they do, they can be Bloom Schwestern. Mitsuki mentions Haim is making it sound as though she's only doing this because she wants to become Bloom Schwestern, but she says she wants to achieve this with her older sister. Kanoko finds their encounters hard to watch as she sees how Haim's personality is changing. Two guests interrupt her brainstorming to say they are on her side. Her words of support for Sumika the other day were so sincere. They hope Sumika becomes Bloom. Kanoko just silently walks away because that's not how she feels about Sumika anymore. In that moment, Sumika steps in to excuse Kanoko, saying she struggles to speak casually to visitors. She's also extra sensitive now because of the Bloom election. Sumika believes Kanoko won't open up to anyone other than the salon workers. A guest believes that nonsense and praises them, saying it's wonderful how they can communicate without words. Kanoko ignores the scene and asks Haim if she's okay and if she needs help. Sumika steps in again to say she's trying to live up to her expectations. Kanoko gives her an angered stare, but Sumika goes on to say the elections are almost over, so she should try to relax a little. They've done everything they could. Haim suspects something is wrong. Later in the dressing room, Haim tells Kanoko she seems gloomy since the other day and she suddenly can't talk to Sumika again. Kanoko says it's nothing. She never used to talk to her, and there's no need for her to. Haim disagrees. She supported Sumika's bid for Bloom. Kanoko has had enough with this Bloom stuff. She doesn't support Sumika either. Haim raises her voice to say Kanoko must learn to talk to people other than her. Kanoko explains that's not the case. Sumika is trying to interfere with their relationship, so there's no need to talk to her anymore. She's also not as good a person as she thought. It was all a misunderstanding. Haim moves the curtains to confront Kanoko face on. She asks what on earth happened between her and Sumika. Kanoko has to tell her, otherwise, she can't know. Sumika tries to make Kanoko give up on Haim, 
but she can't say that to her because that would reveal Kanoko's true feelings for her. Kanoko has no idea what she should say and frustratedly calls Haim a baka. She apologizes right after, telling Haim she did nothing wrong. It was a mistake. Haim closes the curtains and apologizes for trying to force her. Kanoko heads home, but Haim stays, as she's still reading a book. Sumika enters the room and is shocked to see Kanoko tearing up. She tries to stop her, only for Kanoko to move her hand off her, asking Sumika to leave her alone. She's not doing anything. In the salon, Nene asks Sumika what's with her worried face. Sumika is happy to see Nene trying to cheer her up, but Nene explains that's not the case. It's Sumika who takes care of the trouble that happens in the salon. Sumika asks if she thinks there's trouble. Nene suspects there was something bad going on with her and Kanoko. She hears stuff when she's in the kitchen. Sumika explains she's trying to stop Kanoko from bringing romance into the salon. This time, she won't fail and let the salon get destroyed. She wants Kanoko to give up on her love, but she just won't. Kanoko said there's nothing to stop. She's not going to confess or anything, and she just wants things to stay the same. What did she even want to stop? Kanoko isn't trying to break anything anymore. Sumika then asks Nene why did she go for Goedo back then despite her advice and sacrificed their sisterhood for romance. It is revealed that Nene was the salon worker back in the day, then known as Sayanji. Nene understands Sumika is coming from a place of compassion, but it's unwelcome. At least for her, when she falls in love, it's her choice. She doesn't want people telling her what to do. Getting dumped and crying is all part of romance. Nene thinks it's the same with Kanoko, if she knows what she's getting into, nobody has a right to stop her. She suggests to Sumika she should channel that unwelcome compassion into something other than trying to stop her. Kanoko is no longer someone trying to break things, she's now someone who's going to cry. Sumika agrees with that logic. Salon workers cast their remaining votes, and so the Bloom election period is now over. The Bloom winner will be revealed at the salon tomorrow. As the students tally the final votes for the Bloom election, Sumika thinks she might not need to stop Kanoko from making advances to Haim, as she's not trying to break anything anymore. Mai shows the results to Sumika and Mitsuki, revealing that Sumika won. Mai remarks that the outcome isn't very surprising. Sumika goes to inform the other two of the results. Haim congratulates her, while Kanoko remains silent. Haim thinks it's too bad Mitsuki got overtaken, maybe if she had started supporting her earlier, Mitsuki would have won. Sumika wants to talk to Kanoko alone about all of this. Haim says it doesn't need to be today, as Kanoko doesn't seem comfortable. Sumika says that she doesn't want to make her even more uncomfortable but would like to apologize for the things she said the other day. She wants Kanoko to forget she even said anything and acknowledges she was wrong to ask her to give up. Sumika hopes they'll be back on friendly terms tomorrow. Confused by what this is all about, Haim asks what Sumika did to make Kanoko uncomfortable. In her opinion, Sumika is being a bit too one-sided, as Kanoko has been behaving strangely lately. Haim asks her to be a bit more friendly with Kanoko. Sumika thinks the cuteness of Haim might be why Kanoko fell in love with her. Sumika tells Haim that if she wants to be more friendly to Kanoko, they need to be alone. Haim knows Kanoko isn't comfortable with that and asks what Sumika even said to her. It's almost like she's threatening her. Kanoko panics and tells her to stop. Sumika apologizes again for being too forceful and tells Haim she's in the dark about a lot of things here, so she shouldn't blame Kanoko. Alone again, Haim asks Kanoko what she wants to do about all this, but Kanoko doesn't respond. Sumika thinks of how little it took for Kanoko to blush when Haim said they should be more friendly. As she leaves work, Kanoko is outside waiting for her and immediately asks if Sumika is saying she won't interfere anymore. Sumika instead focuses on the fact that Kanoko is talking to her again. She invites her to sit next to her, saying she will listen to anything, but Kanoko has had enough. She just wants Sumika to tell her what it is she wants to say. Sumika doesn't understand what Kanoko wants to do. Like she said, she's going to create a new bloom rule where you can't quit being sisters, so she's curious why Kanoko voted for her. Kanoko thinks this outcome is still better than Mitsuki becoming bloom. Pit's wrong for Haim to support her. Kanoko is okay with Sumika's new rule if that's what matters to her. The only thing that matters to Kanoko is Haim. They should stay out of each other's way. Sumika points out Kanoko's jealousy when Haim was supporting Mitsuki. She asks her if she wants to continue being in love with someone but still hide things from them. Kanoko gets frustrated again. She doesn't want Sumika to interfere with anything she does. Sumika explains she wants to help her. She was watching her during the entire bloom period, 
She realized how much Kanoko loves Haim. She's always looking at her, jealous of the people around her. Every time she tried to stop that love of hers, she ended up making her cry. But Kanoko keeps saying she won't confess. She wants to hide that love from Haim too and stay friends, meaning she's stopping her own love by herself. Sumika's been told she doesn't understand romance, but if continuing to hide for Kanoko is too tough, she's the one who can lend an ear to Kanoko when she needs it. Kanoko sits next to her. She talks about how Sumika found out about her feelings for Haim and accepted that it was romance. Before trying to end it, she treated it as a real existing thing. So maybe, it's okay for her to tell more about how she feels about Haim. Sumika agrees, that's what she's been saying from the beginning. Kanoko opens up about Haim, saying she can never love a person, and Haim is her only friend. Sumika is confused, as it doesn't appear that way to her. The Haim she knows has many friends. Kanoko explains it's true that she's liked by many people, but she's just pretending to be friendly. It's even more true when it comes to romance. People confess to her all the time, but she turns them down and ends it there. Haim has zero interest in romance. It doesn't seem to Sumika that Haim is that cold, but Kanoko explains she never shows her true face. Everyone loves her for what they see, but Haim never loves anyone. Kanoko believes she's the only person who's special to Haim, which is why she'll never confess. She'll stay this way, as her friend. Nothing needs to change. Kanoko realizes she revealed Haim's precious secret. She asks Sumika not to tell anyone. Nobody can find out, not even Haim. Sumika won't tell anyone. She tells Kanoko they can trust each other more than that. Sumika wasn't going to make Kanoko give up anymore, but her love is just so fruitless. If what she said about Haim is true, she gets to stay by her side, but at the cost of hiding and repressing her love forever and never seeing it come true. Kanoko says she should have said not to bring romance to Salon to Mitsuki, she's the one who's in love with Haim. It's weird to Kanoko that she won't get turned down by Haim. Haim's been weird ever since Mitsuki appeared. Sumika thought that Haim's and Mitsuki's relationship was all an act, but it wasn't totally. She realizes where Kanoko's jealousy comes from. Kanoko wants to tell Mitsuki not to bring romance into Salon also, but it's too late for that. She suggests they refrain from taking any action. Sumika wishes to help Kanoko somehow, but Kanoko adds that there's nothing more she wants from her and thanks her for the talk. It helped her see better. She will continue to not say anything to Haim, and no matter how much time passes, that's how things will stay. She then remembers a long time ago when Haim told her, if you don't speak out, it's like it never happened. That makes Kanoko conflicted. Sumika says there is no point in holding it in if that makes her cry. Maybe she can't help her, but she won't let her cry alone. Sumika is the only one who knew about her love, yet she couldn't do anything for her until now. The next day, Haim announces to the guests that the winner of the Bloom election is Sumika. Sumika first thanks all of their support. She gains support not just from the visitors but the salon workers as well. She vows to perform dutifully as Bloom for the next year. She praises all the salon workers and tells them she'd like to continue working at the salon with all of them. People are surprised when Kanoko walks up to Sumika, who then asks her to become her Bloom Schwestern with her. Everyone congratulates them. Kanoko quietly tells her not to interfere. That's why she's become her sister. Sumika lets her know she's just a big sister she can cry with when she needs to. That's all. Haim turns to Kanoko and asks if things are okay now, if she made up with Sumika. Haim was afraid she was making her tag along with her and keeping her from making her own friends. Kanoko is just happy that Haim is happy. Sumika encourages everyone to get along together as salon workers so that, over the next year, not one of them goes missing. That is her new rule as Bloom. Haim says it's too bad Mitsuki didn't win, but she did her part in voting for her. Mitsuki knew she was going to vote for her, she's her little sister, after all. The next day, Haim explains to Kanoko that it's good to have one of the vests she's wearing for the summer uniform. It means you can adjust when it's cold too. Kanoko, however, doesn't think one of these suits her. Haim replies it will once she gets used to it. In order to achieve cuteness, you have to be confident. As soon as Haim opens the door, Mai welcomes them to the summer. Haim has no idea what that is. Mai explains, summer, is German for, summer. The bloom elections are over, and the trees have shifted from spring to summer colors. The students will change clothes as well. Lead Girls Academy's summer uniforms begin today. They are also bringing back the students' tea recommendations and the Schwester tea menu. She encourages them to all work together to make this a great summer. Mai is overwhelmed by the cuteness of their new uniforms. 
She's glad she designed this with cuteness in mind. Hein thinks this feels like it came out of a manga, or rather a cosplay event. But she then remembers that was true for the other uniform too. They were only wearing winter uniforms until now, so Mai is so glad that they could fulfill her dream of a summer uniform. The last one to get dressed up is Mitsuki. When she comes out of the dressing room, the other four are astounded to see her melons are even more exposed with this outfit. Sumika asks if she's okay with this outfit, to which Mitsuki responds she likes it a lot. Sumika then asks Mai if it's okay to let her work in the salon like that, and Mai is not totally sure. She wants to avoid going too sexy, but it's a close call. Haim's face becomes red when she sees Mitsuki like that. She thinks Mitsuki looks extra stacked, and that her melons seem even bigger than before. Haim used to be just a bit taller than her. She looks down and sees her growth hasn't been nearly as great. Mai also asks Mitsuki if she's sure that it will be alright, she doesn't have to push herself too hard. After a bit of confusion, Mai further explains that Mitsuki wearing that summer uniform looks a bit too sexy. Mitsuki says there's nothing to worry about. She's a second year, so it's not inappropriate, given her character. She's more concerned about ruining the summer uniform just for her to look less sexy. It's such a cute design. Haim is surprised by her priorities. Mai says there's no problem then. However, Haim interrupts to ask what will other people think when they see her like that. Mitsuki walks to Haim to ask if she thinks this looks bad on her. Haim is too distracted by her melons to say anything to her face. Embarrassed, Haim says it doesn't look bad. She just wants her to think about the customers. In the salon, Sumika announces they will be wearing new uniforms. It feels better than she expected. Welcoming changes as the bloom. One guest asks if she is happy to be the bloom. She replies what she's most happy about isn't being the bloom. This honor was granted to her by Kanoko. The fact that she's decided to become her sister and their relationship they built together. That is what makes her most happy. She asks everyone to look at her lovely little sister. Kanoko whispers she's not going to participate in this type of thing. Sumika wants her to just leave it all up to her. Elsewhere, Haim is still distracted from her work by Mitsuki's melons. The guests notice how inappropriate the outfit looks on her as they blush. Haim sees that everyone is staring at Mitsuki, which concerns her. Haim tries to hide her so they can't see her. She even takes orders from customers so that Mitsuki doesn't have to. Mitsuki suddenly embraces her from behind. She is just glad to be able to stand in the salon with Haim wearing the same cute uniform. Sumika asks her if they could talk and thanks Haim for hiding her. Inside, Mitsuki becomes frustrated after she's continuously told to cover her outfit so that it looks less lewd. Sumika explains that even if she thinks it's okay, some people will see it as inappropriate. When Haim walks into the room, Mitsuki asks if she feels the same, if she's lewd and needs to cover up. Haim thinks to herself there was nothing else she could do. It was too lewd. So she didn't want others to see. In the next moment, Mitsuki appears let down after being forced to wear a sweater. Haim encourages her they should work together as always. Sumika instead focuses on how good her summer uniform looks on them. She didn't realize how indecent she looked until it was pointed out to her for which she's ashamed. Haim tells her there is nothing to be ashamed of. She's very mature and beautiful. In fact, she has a hard time trying not to stare at her, which isn't her fault either. Mitsuki suddenly takes her sweater off which shocks Haim. She thanks Haim for these words and gives her a big hug. Later after work, Mai got Mitsuki a shirt which is more fitting for the outfit and still covers her melons. Mai mentions this was Haim's idea to make Mitsuki less ashamed. Mitsuki confronts Haim, telling her she said earlier there's no need for her to be ashamed. Haim reveals the truth which is she was jealous of Mitsuki's body. This embarrasses Mitsuki. The next day, Nene serves all the salon workers a cup of tea. Mai explains that this is the students' recommended tea. They should all learn the taste well as it's meant to be their personal recommendation. They should be able to explain the type of tea it is, what they like about it, the recommended way of drinking it, and so on. Haim thinks it just tastes like normal tea. Next, they have two Schwester teas. This is supposed to be a joint recommendation by the two sisters. Again, Haim thinks this tea is nothing special. Mai chose each tea based on their characters. Everyone describes what their tea tastes like. Mitsuki's, Mondro's, has a classy taste with apricot and rose scents. Sumika's tea has a wine flavor. Kanoko's tea has a sweet apple scent. Haim doesn't know what to say about hers, so instead, she just focuses on how wonderful tea is. They can enjoy it together with elegance. Mai thinks that's cute and all, but that's her opinion on tea in general. She should be more specific about it so that her fans will want to order it. Haim just says she will work on that, 
Mitsuki scolds her she can't stay ignorant forever. They are working at a cafe, so explaining the menu is part of the job. Mai agrees. This is important work stuff. Thanks to everyone, the cafe is doing very well recently. The return of tea recommendations and the introduction of summer uniforms are just examples of the many business expansions she has in mind. So, in order to make sure everyone can do the work, she wants their work power to improve. She singles out Haim specifically, telling her to improve her work power. She's still a little unreliable the way she is. She might be more cute and elegant than Mai, but if we say Haim's work power is at 10, Mai's is at 100. Haim is terrified. She's asked again to work on raising her work power through the recommended teas. Sumika reassures her they will support her. Haim feels like everyone is underestimating her. In the salon, everyone seems to do a good job of explaining their tea in detail to the customers. Now it's Haim's turn. Her tea, Engel, means angel. She simply says it tastes good. When asked what she likes about it, she tells them she has a hard time expressing it. So if they could try it and teach her how to explain. Her Oni-sama will scold her if she can't explain it well. The customers order it purely based on Haim's cuteness. Haim is convinced her facade can get her through almost anything. That is her own special work power. When the customers are done drinking the angle, they say it was delicious. One guy says he appreciates the scent of raspberry, so maybe Haim should recommend that. Another guest thinks it was the taste of strawberry. This sparks an argument between the two. They ask Haim which was it, but Haim has no idea. Mitsuki steps in to say they are both correct. Raspberry, strawberry, and lemon are all flavors included in Haim's angle. It's a sweet, gentle tea, giving them the image of a warm sunny day. She encourages Haim to try to refrain from using her tea as a quiz game. In the kitchen, Mitsuki scolds Haim. She should memorize her tea now. She can't keep relying on customers. There's so much more for her to learn. Haim thanks her for the help. Mitsuki learned her tea too. Mitsuki says that's just her job as the elder sister, but Haim remembers she said that when she helped her before too. When she couldn't get the order, she had it all written down. It's been that way ever since they first became sisters. Mitsuki has been watching Haim and making sure she doesn't fail. It makes Haim happy that their sisterhood is important to Mitsuki. She asks Mitsuki if she kind of loves her. Mitsuki blushes and says not to get the wrong idea. She's just helping her because she's her sister. Haim should learn the work already if she feels like she's always getting helped. Haim thinks Mitsuki is always too focused on work. She thought they just got back on good terms. In the salon, Haim thanks Mitsuki for teaching her about her tea. It's the tea she chose for her, so she has to learn it properly. Mitsuki is confused as Mai is the one who chose the tea. Haim plays the character of being a clueless sister so that her older sister has to take care of her. Mitsuki tells her that a salon worker being ill-versed in tea is nothing to be proud of. Haim reminds her she always helps her prepare the tea, which means she must really love her. Mitsuki has enough of this as it's making her blush again. She whispers to Haim she doesn't love her at all, and she shouldn't get the wrong idea. The anime ends as Haim and Mitsuki play piano together like in the old days. The two sisters who've known each other since grade school now work together at Lieb Girls Academy as friends. If you enjoyed this recap, make sure to check out the next one on your screen. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Goodbye.